Okay, everybody. I have something really cool to tell you about. If you haven't heard yet about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain here. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will uh, distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one single place. Now, the way that you can do this is you got to download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm and then you can get started. It's really fun. We just switched over recently here at All Too Real 2 and I'm enjoying it so far. So be sure to check it out and uh, let us know what you think. Okay, everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Michael E. Cullen II, and with me, as always, is... Matthew Bill Gates. Um, Give me a microchip in my vaccine house. But I didn't take a vaccine yet, so I'm not sure how the microchip got into me. But, um... Well, it was that night where I snuck into your house and, uh, okay, I said too much already. Oh, that was you. I thought that was a dream when I saw someone standing in my doorway. Okay. Yeah, that was me. Um, okay. So I, I, I pricked you with a microchip. Oh, I, yeah. I see. Yes. Added the microchip to you. And, uh, now I know where you are. Cool. At all, at all times. Uh-oh. <laughs> right now, you're at your house. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Talking to me on your phone. I mean, you don't need a microchip to know that, but, uh... Damn it, I wasted that money. E- probably, yeah. Uh, um, a lot of it, actually. Yeah, I mean, there there is this guy on the side of the road... Mm-hmm. He had a nice van. Okay. And, and it said microchips for sale. Mm, that's strange, suspicious. Okay. Um, I mean, it, it, it was written, it was spelled wrong, but, um, and it, um, it was on a cardboard, <laughs> cardboard, you know, sign. It was a white van. He did tell me if I came inside the van, I, you know, I could have some candy. Um, and, and, and see the puppy that he had inside. Um, didn't any, anyone ever tell you not to, to do that? To talk to strangers, especially with vans and candy and whatnot? But it was a nice puppy. Oh, there was a puppy in the van, actually, for real? Yeah, his name is Sparky. Uh-oh. Um, <laughs> 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 not Sparky, that's not a good... Uh, <laughs> So, anyways, um, today on the show, we are covering the latest episode of WandaVision, um, episode 7, entitled Breaking the Fourth Wall. Ooh. Yes. And that, that's not spooky like the last one, but it's still kind of... Ooh. Yes. Mysterious. There we go. Um little spooky-ish. Yeah. Um, so, um... 
in this episode, um, first off, I'd like to uh, read... Uh, first off, actually, let me ask you your, your initial thoughts here, Matthew. Uh, I really liked the episode a lot. I thought it was probably one of the best ones we've had so far. Um, you know, minus the last episode, episode number five, which are probably my favorites so far. Yeah. The past three episodes have probably been my favorites. Um, <clears throat> but all the episodes before that are important to, to build the story. Which, you know, some people were complaining about, well, the story, it's like, yeah, it's called world building. Um, that's the whole point. What do you think Marvel was doing for 11 fucking years from Iron Man 1 to Endgame? I think you could handle mm, nine weeks of, of world building if you could wait 11 years. Just saying. Because it's 52 weeks in one year. So 52 times 11 is, who knows, over 500 weeks. So, um, I'm pretty sure <laughs> nine weeks. Or eight weeks rather, because because episode one and two is uploaded all at once. So in actuality, it's eight weeks and not with nine episodes. So you know, be patient. Everything's gonna be fine. You know, it's all gonna resolve itself. Okay, just chill out. Anyway, um, what chill, was I saying? Oh, chillax, yeah. everybody, chillax. <laughs> yeah. So I like the episode. <laughs> Me too. I loved it. I thought it was actually one of my favorites so far. Um, okay, so um, I asked uh, some of our uh, listeners online what they thought of this. Um, well, actually, I asked all of our listeners, and whoever responded is who I'm <laughs> quoting here. Okay, listener Bill um, said, uh, loved it. I don't want to spoil here, but I'm glad the reveal of the villain was not who everyone kept believing it was. Introducing a new hero. Vision forgetting he can fly seems silly, however. Mm. Which I have an issue with. I don't know. Because I don't <laughs> think he really fly. I don't really think he forgot he could fly. Yeah. Um, anyways, um, then, uh, Kermit said, um, everyone that, everyone that, uh, geeked over the X-Men connection can now geek over the Fantastic Four connection. Which I'm not really sure what that is about. Because we really don't have a Fantastic Four connection here yet. Um, as far as I know, we yeah. don't. Yeah, that was kind of a mislead a little bit, I think. Yeah. Um, or at least like a teaser, just like how they did with uh, <clears throat> Pietro. Yeah, I mean, there could be, possibly. Um, yeah. It says, it puts pressure on the Falcon and the Winter Soldier to expand the MCU um, and the next three releases, uh, Black Widow, um, which was supposed to come out last year. And uh, Spider Man and Doctor Strange, so yeah, which would be interesting to see how they uh, expand on everything and hopefully continue the momentum that's been built here, in my opinion. Um, yeah. Also, um, my sister Christy gave us a big heart emoji in response, so I'm assuming that means she liked it, maybe even loved it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe yeah maybe even loved it so uh <clears throat> yes so um we've got um okay th this episode like i said it was called uh breaking the fourth wall it's directed by uh, matt shackman and written by uh, cameron squires and uh the showrunner is jack Schaefer. um so uh <laughs> This, uh, so, we start out with, uh, with, with, um, in a late 2000s setting sort of thing. We got, like, that they're, they're kind of aping the, uh, the, the shows like The Office and, uh, Modern Family and things of that nature. Um, the opening credits have a Office kind of sound to them, to the mm -hmm. music. Um, the, uh, the visuals are very happy endings, uh, TV show that was, uh, produced by the Russo brothers who, uh, right. directed Endgame and Infinity War and Civil War and a bunch of other stuff in the, uh, Marvel Universe. Um, they, uh, they're, so, so, like, in that, the, the, um, 
credits and happy endings just kept saying happy, 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 like uh, this said Wanda, 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 you know, um, in different fonts right. and stuff. Um, the uh, There was at one point like a ransom note in the middle of this credits, too. <laughs> Just kind of like saying, like, get me out of here sort of thing or something. I can't remember exactly what it said. I wish I would have written it down, but I forgot to. Um, <laughs> so um, there was a, uh, at the end, the the font was in a Modern Family style font when it said WandaVision. So, um, except for being in yellow, it was in red, like uh, Wanda's powers. Um <laughs> They're a very modern family. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> very modern. Um, so, uh, <laughs> what, um, so, so, so then we had, um, it opened up and, uh, basically, Wanda is underneath a blanket. Well, she's in her bed and then she, puts herself underneath the blanket um the the blanket has hexagonal shapes on it as does the other pillow that she's not using Mm -hmm. her pillow doesn't however so it has kind of like a flower type shape on it or something um uh so um and, and Vision, which in the other pillow, which we're assuming is Vision's pillow, has hexagonal shapes on it. Um, yeah. So, uh, Wanda seems very depressed here. Mm. And uh, kind of out of it. Um, the, uh, the boys, Tommy and Billy, come in to wake her up. And uh, they're talking about how their, uh, their game keeps messing up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And, uh, we, we, we cut to a clip of them trying to play their video games. And, uh, the controllers keep changing from, like, modern, like, PlayStation or Xbox <laughs> controllers into, like, back to, uh, all the way back to, like, 2600, uh, Atari controllers. And, right. um. The only good Atari, by the way. Yes. <laughs> and, uh. <laughs> I still have my 2600 somewhere. Awesome. Yeah. I don't know if it, I don't know if it works, but I really hope it does because I need to try to figure yeah. it out someday because that'd be cool. Um, anyways, the uh, yeah my 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 twenty six hundred that I got from my next door neighbors. Um, wow. Yeah, my there was an old couple that used to live next door to me when I was a kid, and they bought it for their grandkids, and then their grandkids moved out of state, so they were never there a lot, so they gave it to me. <laughs> um, I used to love playing Atari bowling. <laughs> yeah, not sure why, but that's my favorite game of all time. Yeah, it's a good one. Mm-hmm. Just like I, I just love the sounds of it. It goes, <laughs> and then, and then when you get a strike, it goes, woo, 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 woo. Yeah, that, that was it. Okay, um, so um, <laughs> back to uh, the plot here. Um, yeah, the, the the game controllers keep changing to the point where they just change into Uno cards. And are no longer game controllers at all. Um, so uh, they're telling they're, they're telling uh, their mom about this, and uh, and then Billy talks about how he keeps hearing these voices in his head, and that it's very loud and confusing and stuff. Um, yeah. <clears throat> um. So. Um. Then, uh, then Wanda goes downstairs to, uh, make breakfast for herself. And, uh, she's, uh, pouring a bowl of cereal into a red bowl, by the way. But, um, oh. yeah, she, she's, uh, she's, <clears throat> she's, she's, uh, opening up her fridge. Oh yeah, by, by the way, when she opened up her fridge, I noticed that one of the products in there was a great value product. Which oh, is wow. which is a Walmart brand product because oh, oh. yeah just just noticing I don't know why I <laughs> <clears throat> thought that was interesting um, make it kind of realistic in a way you know um, so we're getting more to reality in my opinion you know what I mean instead of fictional 
right. to- totally just full fi- fully fictional brand. <clears throat> um, she she's pouring a bowl of sugar snaps, which could be a <clears throat> reference to the snap, you know, or the snaps in general that happened in uh, Infinity War and Endgame. Right. Um, we've got, uh, on the back of, on the, on the front of the box, there's a clown, which is foreshadowing, I think, the, the circus element that we've got going on in the show. Um, <laughs> we've also got, uh, plus, I mean, I also think the whole idea of, like, a clown is wearing makeup disguising themselves, and there's also that idea, too. Um, right. There's, uh, on the back, there's a, a maze. Um, with an elephant on it, which is, I think, symbolic of the fact that an elephant never forgets. Um, I don't know. And th- then, um, also the, uh, when she's pouring the milk into the cereal, the, uh, the milk carton changes as well from, uh, like the controllers did, changes from, uh, a modern carton all the way back to a glass bottle. <laughs> um, on the, uh, on the carton, however, there's a missing child on it, which I think could be either symbolic of the missing uh, person that Jimmy Woo is looking for, or possibly the uh, the fact that children are missing and stuff. You know, we we have you know the things keep changing there. Um, Wanda's basically really depressed, you know, like we said. Um, <clears throat> She's, uh, she ends up, uh, having, um, um, Agnes comes over and Agnes offers to take the kids and babysit them. Yeah. For some me time. Oh, by the way, too, also, <clears throat> when, when Wanda, um, removed the, the covers from her bed, she was wearing the same clothes as the night previously, which just normally doesn't happen. Um. Because she's usually, it's like a new setting and everything like that. Yeah, and she usually changes everything. So yeah. that, yeah, so that kind of indicates too that like her magic is being spent, like it's kind of making her tired and like she's maybe perhaps pushing herself too far, uh, that she can't like, um, fully recuperate from the mag- magic of, cause remember the first two episodes, she didn't really use that much magic at all. It was just like, parlor tricks and like yeah. making her dishes flow and you know stuff like that not expanding the town by like 16 miles or whatever <laughs> like you, you know what you know what's also interesting too um somebody pointed this out online and i didn't notice it until now but at the beginning of every episode where uh, it says previously on wandavision mm-hmm. um each episode her voice gets more complacent and depressed oh hmm yeah, like like it starts out like in the in 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 the like second episode where she says previously on Wandavision she's really happy, and by the time this one happens it's kind of like previously on Wandavision. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, um, it just gets it. She gets she gets more like depressed in each one. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Like things are kind <laughs> of unraveling. Um. So they're even doing it on that. That's just weird. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, yeah, because somebody, uh, on a video that I saw on YouTube, I don't remember who it was, but they played each one of them. And you can totally hear it when you hear them back to back, how mm-hmm. how depressed she gets in each one. Oh. <clears throat> um, the, uh, so, so Agnes takes the kids, um, over to her house. Um, what, what's happening now, then, Matt? Um, so they kind of go to um, what's what's going on with Vision as well. Now he wakes up and he's in like surrounded by a carnival or like a, a like circus. A circus. Yeah. yeah. And then he wakes up and stuff, and then this guy shows up and he's like, "Are you the clown?" and you know, well, at least you got your makeup on, you know, we're, we're, you know, you're late for your rehearsal with the escape artist. And then the escape artist is none other than our Darcy. And she's got like chains around her, you know, tied to a car or whatever, chained to a car. Yeah. And then like, just like, 
you know, there's like a miscommunication because he like points at her and is like, like locking eyes with her and walking to her, and she's like, like, uh, can I help you, creeper? And then he's like, <laughs> like it sounds like he's doing some cheesy pickup line, like, you don't remember me from last night? You know, we, we locked eyes with each other. We had like an unspoken understanding. She's like, <laughs> uh, hard ass. <laughs> <laughs> And then he's like, no, wait up. And he's like, kind of like running after her, like all like skipping and stuff like that. And then it, it kind of goes, alternates between that to like, um, uh, cause Billy and Tommy, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're at Agnes's house. And, uh, and then, uh, Billy says that he, he likes it there. And Agnes is like, you know, touched like, like, oh, I, I'm, you know, I'm glad. And he's like, why is it? Cause, you know, um, Senior Scratchy is such a good listener, you know, her, her rabbit. Yeah. And, um, which, um, you know, it was Scratchy was, Scratch was a old Nick thing for the devil at a certain time mm-hmm. in, in this world. Anyway, yep. um, got the right out there. Um, also, also in, in, in and, our, um, in our world like, no. too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, um, so, uh, he goes, no, it's, um, it's quiet here. And, and he's like, you're quiet on the inside and she kind of has like this weird look on her face like that's yeah. kind of a creepy thing to say you know <laughs> and then um and then, and then tommy's like is is mom gonna be okay and she's like kind of looks worried and she's like and then she kind of changes beat like oh of, of course you know she's you know she's super mom there's not anything that she can't do which is interesting <laughs> and uh and then like it goes to like the whole modern family thing and she's like ralph says that i sugarcoat things but you know, you you tell a ten year old that his mother is cuckoo for cocoa puffs, you know, or whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is weird because that's kind of an old saying too. Um, yeah, like cuckoo. That was a that was like a jingle for cocoa puffs, wasn't it? I mean, that yeah, was, I think they still use it, but yeah, it's so, just, yeah. Um, kind of almost a politically incorrect way of talking about mental illness, but but uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but you know, whatever. It's it's modern family, I guess. And um, but so it kind of switches. It kind of goes back from from that to Wanda kind of having like her her personal day to herself of like, like you mentioned, all the glitches. Like the fireplace turns into like an old style, you know, one from like the fifties or whatever, or even older, really. That looked like an old like eighteen hundred. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, it, type it, of it's it's the it's the same fireplace <laughs> from the first episode. So okay, yeah. And then, like, the stairs change at when, and different things, like, they keep changing, like, and the TV ends up changing, too, when she's watching, <clears throat> she's watching, like, news, and then it changes, and then even the guy on the TV changes to an old, you know, black and white guy. <laughs> yeah, the old TV with the antenna. And also, too, right, when she was, um, pouring, when she was pouring cereal for herself, herself, and, uh, she was, like, listening to the radio, it said, um, tune back in to WNDA. Yeah. Uh, or the new, maybe it was a news channel saying that, but, um, yeah. So it sounds like Wanda, you know, mm. WND. And, uh, and then, so yeah, it goes back to Vision. Vision wakes up Darcy and then she kind of takes a moment to get her, you know, bearings back and stuff. And then, you know, he's telling her what happened and she's, you know, they, they, they decide to do like the buddy, buddy road trip type of part of the show. And she's like explaining to him, like, He's like, so let, let, let me understand. So Wanda killed me. He's like, yeah, but you kind of asked her to do it. He's like, why? Why would I do that? It's like, well, <laughs> the universe. Well, well, technically half the universe. He's like, well, did it work? And she's like, it did. But then the bad guy rewound time and killed you himself. <laughs> <laughs> but to set up the context would take, you know, basically implying like all the movies that, you know, yeah. led, to, led to like 10, 15, 20 different movies or whatever. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. And he like gyms the camera like in the office. Like, yeah. He looks at it and he's like, what? <laughs> it's a little smirk on his face. Like. <laughs> Like Jim would <laughs> on the office, yeah. Um, for people that don't watch that show, which is right, probably yeah. nobody. Um, <laughs> right, exactly. It's like one of the most successful shows in history. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you don't know who Jim on the office is, you've got something wrong with yourself. <laughs> yeah. Speak, speaking of the office, I mean, 
Randall Park was on an episode of The Office. So that's right. Yeah, he played. Uh, he played Jim, didn't he? Yeah, he, uh, yeah. He, he played Asian Jim. Um, that's right. Because <laughs> wasn't that like a prank to make to, to Dwight seem like that was him the whole time or something? Yeah. Or... <laughs> uh, wow, that was one of the best pranks on that show. Um, anyways, the uh, yeah. So yeah, we, we've got uh, they're they're. While they're traveling too, we've got the idea they they keep getting um, blocked on their way to get back to the house by uh, right. construction and red lights and other things. Kids walking down the street, you know, like a yeah. There's, weird... there's no school in sight. Um, yeah, you know, <laughs> um, it's kind of a, it's it's very Truman Show like because yeah. it's like. Like like when when uh, when Truman's trying to escape uh, the town that he's in, and they keep putting up barriers so he can't travel any further. Right. Yeah, yeah I remember that. And then mm-hmm. he eventually even got on a a bridge or something or a boat, and then yeah, and yeah. something happened where he couldn't go on that. I forgot yeah. what happened, but yeah, he he had uh, memories. Uh, yeah, the, I gotta watch that movie again. It's been a while. Um, but yeah. anyways, the uh, um, we, uh, on the outside though, what we got going on here is, uh, we've got, uh, Monica and Jimmy, they meet with a loyal sport, sword per- personnel, which, um, I don't think is the, uh, person that they were talking about. Who's like the, uh, the, the engineer that, uh, she was talking about that was going to meet with them. No, it was, cause she said my guy, yeah. plus two that implied that this was someone that was not really part of the sword agency it was more of like a a different contact you know um well i think she was a sword agent too was it oh, yeah, okay because she was loyal to uh to monica's mom maria so no no i mean i mean her I, i'm talking about the the person she said that um oh her her, con- her, her contact yeah i don't think that was a yeah, i'm saying i don't think that person was part yeah. of sword i think just someone she knew or whatever mm-hmm. um there's a, happen to be. There, there's a there's a theory I saw online that uh, the the woman that we did see is actually that uh, that um, that daughter of the uh, of, um, of Ben Mendelsohn's character from Captain Marvel. Oh, in disguise as a human, but <clears throat> interesting. That that could be possibly, but who knows? Um, <laughs> the um. But they they uh they're basically they they bring this really cool uh truck that's also also hexagonal shaped <laughs> um it's this vehicle that should be able to cross the barrier the the mission however is unsuccessful as half the vehicle transforms into a pickup truck <laughs> as it goes through um where Monica can't get through to the other side um using that um. We do see, like, while she's in there, the the really cool suit that she's wearing. It's like a kind of a looks like an astronaut's type suit, and um, it's very two thousand one, a space odyssey, <clears throat> which um, in in in, uh, in the cinematography and in the way that it looks, with the lights flashing yeah. on the screen and everything, and um. Which which is interesting because that that whole movie is about like rebirth and things of that nature too. So. Right. Um, <clears throat> the uh, I don't know. Um, basically, Monica gets out and actually realizes she she decides to go in herself, just walk <laughs> in, and uh, we see this really cool thing on the screen where you see her going through and you see all the different versions of her that we've seen so far. Right, and then we hear like these voices, kind of like we did when she was coming out of the blip. Um, we we hear uh, we hear Captain Marvel, we hear Maria Rambo, we hear uh, Nick Fury, different people talking to her, like things from the uh, from Captain Marvel, basically. And uh, yeah, they show Carol theme on the you know subtitles or whatever. Yeah. Um. So. What happens then once she gets in there? 
Oh man. So she like goes through like this weird, like trippy thing where like they're making all these weird, like glitchy sounds and noises, like for her breaking like the sound barrier and stuff like that. And uh, she ends up um, finally breaking through. She break on through to the other side. Sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> every time you say that, I'm mm-hmm. like thinking of that song. Uh, she, she gets through and then her eyes are like completely blue. Yeah. Or like uh, not, not even blue, almost like a turquoise kind of bluish color. Um, yeah. Almost glowing. Yeah. Almost glowing. And then for like about like 10 seconds, everything, everything looks like a spectrum. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. Um, because in the comic books she was called Spectrum for a while. Anyway, uh, and, 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 and like, the thing she's she read, sees everything. The thing she's reading things on too in the truck originally is a spectrometer, spectrometer or whatever. Oh wow. So, yeah. Anyways, so. <laughs> interesting. Yeah. So that could be a, a hinting or a nod to her comic book origins. Yeah. But then again, though, yeah. she's been a bunch of things. She's been photon just like her mother. And also Captain Marvel for a while as well. So, yeah. you know, um, lots of different characters that she's um, been in different stories, I guess, different versions or whatever. Um, I Unfortunately, I haven't read a lot of these. Watching these kind of shows and movies, though, has actually made me a lot more interested in reading comic books, actually. Because I never really did that as a kid that was not, yeah, you know, my thing. Like, kind of, I like sports a lot, like baseball and, and video games. That was pretty much... My two main things as a kid was baseball and video games. So I, I never really saw, like, finally as an adult, you know, like, pushing 40, suddenly getting into you know, comic books and stuff. But uh, Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. No. no. Not really. That, I'm sorry, but, like, comic books and games and stuff, that, that thing is now becoming an all-age thing. Like, it's yeah. not associated with, like, a particular age group anymore but anyway so i digress but um <clears throat> so like she sees all these like um she sees things from the perspective of like like she sees like these wiggly things like where the power like where the telephone poles are and like she could see like basically like where the energy is like coming from um for like 10 seconds and then her eyes return to her normal color and then she goes and runs off to tell wanda what's going on but it was weird because for a split second, <clears throat> Wanda um, seemed more surprised and angry when um, when she got there. And then, like, all of a sudden she switched to anger, which is, like, interesting right there. Like, because I know, like, Super Carlin Brothers had a, a, a theory video a few days ago about wondering if, like, there's two different Wandas or if she has kind of like a, quote, split personality, which that concept itself is kind of outdated, but whatever. Um, like the idea that you literally have a complete split personality is like very, very few people actually. Yeah. Well, well there, there, there is the, there is a dissociative identity disorder, which actually does okay. exist. Um, which, okay. Which I mean, m- most people would refer to it in the past as like a split personality, but it's actually, you know, dissociative identity disorder where you can actually, it, it does exist. Um, okay. Which, which is interesting because I mean, I think the actually the best example of that on television recently was on the Flash. I think in the way that uh, it, even though it's not really um, a, a true dissociative identity disorder, but the fact that uh, Caitlin is also Frost. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. <clears throat> that's right. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been a while since I watched that episode, but. Uh... Or those episodes where, yeah. where she's, but in those episodes though, she still like knows about the other person though, and it's still yeah. Well, well, know, well. It, actually, a lot of times with the dissociative identity disorder, they do know about each other. Right, that's what I'm getting at though. But like a lot of the, <clears> what I'm saying though, <throat> a lot of like the old TV shows, like and stuff in movies, like they would actually make it seem like it was literally like completely like a different person, like who like literally took over like like their memories were different like there was no like sense of like i'm actually this other person as well like it was literally like a different person completely yeah well well like in, Back in the 80s in, shit like that like, i think in the true dissociative identity disorder the way it acts i mean i know this is kind of a tangent we're going on but i think the way <laughs> the way it is is they they actually do have separate personalities 
but the one personality is aware of the other one. Gotcha. Like, okay. like, like so, knows that the other one's there, and a lot of times, like one of the personalities. I mean, because it could be multiple personalities as well, and that, but it's not multiple personality disorder. Right. It's uh, you know, or a split personality. It's uh, it's more like a you know, like they have. It, it's it's there to protect each other and stuff like that. Or sometimes, you know, like the right. one the one identity will protect the other identity. Um, but uh, anyways, right. um, okay. Do you want to take a quick break here, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sure. Yeah, we'll come back with some more about this here. Um, not about dissociative identity disorder, but about the show. <laughs> um, right after this, we'll be right back. What is Gen X? What is the silent generation? What do generations have in common? Hi, I'm Trish the Dish from the Gen X Voice Podcast, and I invite you to listen to conversations I have with folks from different generations, backgrounds, beliefs, and experiences in an attempt to see what connects rather than divides us. Even though Gen X has been called slackers, Karens, or not mentioned at all in some cases, we are the bridge generation, so I feel compelled to do my part to destroy ageism by bringing all these voices together. And, as a bonus, each guest gets to answer some 80s questions at the end of each show. So download and listen to Gen X Voice today on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And let's see how much we have in common after all. And we are back. So, um... So, okay, so, so, anyways, we've got this whole thing where, uh, back to, uh, back to, uh, Darcy and Vision. They're getting blocked by things. Eventually, Vision does realize, he's like, he's like, basically, like, what the fuck am I doing here? Um, I can fly. And he realizes he can, exactly. he realizes he can fly and he's just like, Hey, you know, I'm going to fly over there. We don't see what happens after that really, but, um, no, no, but it's just like, he's, yeah, he's talking to the camera and he's like, wait a minute, <laughs> and which just, is weird though, because he talked, Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, and he just leaves Darcy there though, but <laughs> right. But what's interesting though, is that he's talking, he's having an interview with the person, like he's sitting down on like, on like a, like an actor's chair, basically. Yeah. Like having an interview, and that's when he comes like to the conclusion, like, wait a minute, this is absurd. I should be there for, with, for my wife. And he takes off his microphone. He gets like tripped up on the thing, but then it goes back into the 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 RV or whatever. And then that's when he gets up and flies. So it's like, was that all in his head, like having that well, interview? Well, <laughs> well, that's that's what it is. It's kind of like in okay in reality TV and on shows like The Office mm-hmm. and. uh and um modern family and stuff uh a lot of times when they do those like uh talking heads to the camera it's emphasizing what's going on inside your head at that moment oh okay so i think that was kind of a symbolism of that because i mean obviously they record that stuff after the events happen um because, oh, yeah. because like like if you're watching something like the bachelor or whatever you know they'll 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 have the event going on and then they'll cut to the girl talking to the camera and saying and and then I thought that uh you know I was going to get the rose from Johnny but I didn't you know whatever so um right, exactly. it's uh but you know obviously that's what was going on in her head but then they they take them out later and they interview them and you know then splice that in so you kind of know what was going on in their head at the time so yeah <laughs> yeah um. Which is kind of absurd in a way, but anyway, um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of which, too, about the interview. So, um, yeah. Same thing happened to Wanda, where the interviewer actually talked to her and goes, um, what do you think you might deserve this? Cause she was talking about just how she's like fraying, you know, like, uh, she can't control a lot of the stuff lately, you know, uh, everything's glitching out, like, you know. And then the guy's like, what do you, do you think that you might deserve this? And she's like, uh, what? Like, you're not supposed to talk. <laughs> like, and, and the thing is, it, it sounds like a guy a little bit, but it could be a woman with a deep voice. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> so, 
So that's interesting. Yeah. So like Darcy's like when Vision flies out, he's like, okay, I guess I'll just meet you there then. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what else is going on here? Oh boy. So, <clears throat> so as that's going on, um, we also have the, um, see, so yeah, so Monica, she, she confronts Wanda at her house. Wanda at first doesn't really seem angry. She's more of just surprised. Like, how did you get back in here? But then she tells him about vision and she just gets like white hot with rage and like expels her again from the house. And then, um, she eventually th- tries to throw Monica down on the ground, but then when she lands, this blue energy stuff like comes out of her shoes, like her feet, and then her eyes become blue again. And then Ma- and then Wanda's like kind of like afraid, surprised, or whatever that she's got like powers of her own or whatever. And then um, because you know she's used to just being able to bully people for the past few weeks with her powers, and now suddenly she's got someone that she, you know can match her. So like a typical punk ass bitch. Uh, <laughs> you know, she's like, oh no, oh no, I actually have someone that could actually be my equal all of a sudden. That's not fair. Even though by definition that is the literal definition of fairness. But okay. Anyway, um and then she's like, you know, you're a liar or whatever. And then Monica, and Monica says, you know, the only lies I have been telling are the ones that you put in my mouth. And you know, you go ahead and, and kill me if you want. And then she hesitates and then Monica says that's a difference between her and Hayward. Because Hayward would just burn this entire town to the ground just to get what he wants, which is vision. And just as, you know, she's trying to reason with her, um, Agnes is watching from her window and decides to intervene. And then says, like, you know, you know, poor Wanda's had a, you know, basically being that kind of mothering type of, you know, vibe that she has with Wanda sometimes. Like, you know, poor Wanda's had enough and, Tells her, you know, to run along, dear, you know, and takes Wanda into her house and Wanda, you know, she offers her a cup of tea. Wanda sees two plates with like a half eaten peanut butter jelly sandwiches and sinister music starts playing and she says, where are the twins? And then Agnes says, oh, they might be playing down in the basement or something. We, we and have- so Wanda... We also, yeah, sorry. The, the creepiest part of the whole thing is that Yo Gabba Gabba is playing on the TV. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yo Gabba Gabba, that weird, <laughs> but, weird ass show. But, but then also we have, uh, <clears throat> there's a, there's a big cicada on the, uh, oh, on the curtain. Right. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah. Fuck it. Cause that's not ominous as shit. Um, yeah. And cicadas yeah. are actually symbolic of rebirth. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And there's one of them, which they usually fly in like in huge swarms and yeah. shit. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, they make that cool sound. Plus, too, Cicada was a villain in The Flash. It was a pretty cool, um, <clears throat> pretty cool season of that. With ah um, oh, shit, what's his name? I always forget his name. Um, oh, uh, yeah, the actor. Um, yeah, the guy who plays Cicada. Um, damn it, I'm blanking on his name too. From American Pie, Chris, plus he was uh, in uh, Chris. Um, yeah, Chris something. Damn it. Uh, whatever. A nice guy. Your dad met him. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> at the Mud Hens game or, or whatever. Yeah, um, anyway. Um, he, he used to date Katie Holmes years ago. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, well. Cool guy. Sorry, I can't remember your last name, but, um, good, good actor, good guy. Anyway, mm-hmm. that reminded me of Cicada. So anyway, so Rhonda, you know, walks slowly down into the basement with the sinister music playing. And, you know, after a few steps, Klein. The basement. Klein. What's that? Klein. Chris Klein. Oh, Chris Sorry. Klein. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Klein. Revi- re- re- uh, blah, blah. Klein. I can't think of the word. Rhymes. God damn it. What, what's going on with us? <laughs> it's like, like our reality reality is being re- rewritten and we can't. And we're like slowly descending into someone else's reality. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> so she goes down to the basement and, you know, things look like a normal basement for a, a, a bit. And all of a sudden, though, there's vines growing everywhere, and Wanda doesn't apparently seem that this is, like, too strange for her. Like, I mean, she's kind of seen it strange, but, like, a normal person would be freaked out once they realize a basement is full of vines and weird, like, glowing red shit that looks like some, like, ancient temple. You think that a normal person would be in that situation and be like, uh, I should probably get out of here. 
No, she's just kind of walking around. So and then you've never been in a basement, she sees, like, a basement that looks like that? No, I've never been to a basement full of vines and like um, magical artifacts and the weird glowy red shit. And then a, a, a something that looks like a big spell book that's like glowing. Um, shit. And I, then, I've had weird friends as a kid then. Well, I guess so, because, yeah, I've never encountered that before. Um, yeah, I mean, I went down to the basement me, to play but, uh, video games in my friend's basement, and it looked just like, <clears throat> wait, no, yeah. joking. <laughs> or just full of vines. Yeah. Or just full of vines and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, some of those vines are hard to get out, you know. And I so. never did find that uh, Sega Genesis in there. I don't know what the hell is going on. <laughs> I just kept looking. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So, um, so then we, we hear the door shuts and then Agnes walks in and she goes, Wanda, Wanda, you didn't think that you were the only magic girl girl in town, did you? And then she, she's holding scratch, by the way, when she says yeah. that, which is interesting. Senior like, scratchy. The name is Agatha. Senior scratchy. Yeah. And then she goes, the name is Agatha. Agatha Harkness. So nice to finally meet you. And then her eyes turn violet, and then it makes Wanda's eyes turn violet. And it's like, oh shit. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> and the, and Which, by the way, I don't agree. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just saying, I don't agree with that person that commented saying that the villain didn't turn out what everyone was saying. Well, pretty much everyone was saying it was going to be Agatha, the Har- Agatha Harkness. So well, well, a lot of people were saying Mephisto, but, but the thing is, it still could be Mephisto. Well, yeah, she works. She works with Mephisto, though, so... Yeah. Uh, yeah, or whatever. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> who I mean, knows? S- since the first episode, everybody was saying that it was Agatha Harkness. So, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> um, Which, you know, then again, that person might not have been watching all these theory videos and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> So, you know, we can... Um, yeah, we can't, we can't say anything. Slack. Yeah, we don't want to, you know. But, um, anyways, um, the... Uh, that then we get the um we get we get the opening credits to a TV show, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with with a theme song called Agatha All Along, <laughs> and right. um yeah, and then we see we see the uh we, we see basically that uh that that uh she was behind all of these different things that happened including Pietro and uh basically uh she was behind you know Pietro she also killed Sparky as we learn <laughs> she's like I killed Sparky too <laughs> and yeah. like la- cackles laughs yeah. like a witch oh oh god i i knew she killed Sparky oh way i did back too. I, I had a feeling <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and it's like, cause I think she was doing it to try to get Mon- um, Wanda, not Monica, Wanda to bring her, bring her back to life or get one of the kids to do it or something, you know, or get the kids like, to age up. Um, <clears throat> yeah, like to test their powers basically or something like that. Um, yeah. Which is interesting, but, um, so that theme song was pretty, it kind of reminded me of, um, like a fifties type of, um, oh, I don't know. It's kind of like Munsters or, uh, or yeah. Adams family ish in a way. Um, yeah. and, and the font was very Munsters in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we also had a, a, forgot we had a commercial in this as well. Oh yeah. For, for an antidepressant <laughs> called Nexus. Um, so, uh, here, um, the, the antidepressant called Nexus, and we have like a, the narrator says, feeling depressed, like the world goes on without you? Do you just <laughs> want to be left alone? Ask your doctor about Nexus, a unique antidepressant that works to anchor you back to your reality. Or the reality, <laughs> or, or the reality of your choice. And then it goes, <laughs> side effects include feeling your feelings, <laughs> confronting the, your truth, seizing your destiny, Impossible, impossible more depression. <laughs> you should not take Nexus unless your doctor has cleared you to move on with your life. <laughs> Nexus, because the world doesn't revolve around you, or does it? 
<laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> great commercial. Still played by the same woman that was in all the other commercials. Yeah, too. and then we have the guy in there as the as the like pharmacist. Um, right. Yeah, it was all they, they were in all the commercials except for last week, um, which they did not appear in because that was the animated one. Um. So right, yeah, yeah. Um, I uh, in in the comics, a Nexus being, which Wanda is in the comics, is someone mm-hmm. who's the same in all realities. <clears throat> so, like in a multi right. in a multiverse, Wanda was the Nexus of of her world that connected to all the other worlds. <clears throat> Right, like there's no, like there's not Wanda from Earth three or whatever. Like it's she's Wanda, like she's the same in every Earth. So right, yeah, basically, gotcha. yeah. Um, so there's not like different versions of herself all running into each other or something like that. Yeah, like um, gotcha. So and then, <clears throat> and then like you know it's so, so so there's a lot of lot to unpack there and stuff and that. Um, and so I think mm-hmm. that we're gonna find out more about that in the next couple of weeks. Um. Uh, a couple of uh, stray things before we we go to another break here. Um, earlier on in the episode, um, um, uh, Agnes asks for um, Wanda to look at her mole. <laughs> um, in uh, in hit in in, um, in in fiction throughout history, um, witches a witch's mole often meant that they were being controlled by the devil. Mm. Or that they had some kind of connection to the devil. Um, uh, The way that Monica gets her powers when she goes through the scene is very reminiscent of the way that uh, Carol, that Carol Danvers got hers in uh, Captain Marvel. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, also, um, we do have the first, um, mid credit scene in this episode. Right. So what happens there? Oh, <clears throat> well, Monica, she's going back to the house after, you know, being rebuked by, um, Agnes and she like, um, opens up like a, um, what do you call it? Like a, not a trap door, but like a, um, oh, it's kind of like a cellar door sort of thing. Cellar yeah. door. Also too, a car is parked in the driveway that kind of looked like Iron Man's suit a little bit, or at least like, like the first one. So it was like red and gold. Oh, interesting. And I'm not sure if his old suit was red and gold or if it was just red, but I thought it, it was, I, thought, I mean like his first like major one was like red and gold. Okay. Yeah. So, um, that, yeah, the car has kind of got that kind of color scheme. And then, um, and she opens uh, the cellar door, and like she sees like the vines, you know, all like violet kind of color again, like kind of energy basically coming from these vines. And then um, there's this guy standing behind her. I'm not sure if it was Pietro or someone else actually. Um, oh, it was. It was okay. He's wearing like a hipster cap, and he's like Snoop. He's gonna Snoop or something like that. And then yeah. uh, then it just. Yeah, it was totally and, uh, it was totally Evan Peters at least. Okay, if, if that is Pietro, who knows who he is? You know, <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, so I had a question about that. So is he even a real person or just an illusion? Because when they showed the Agatha scenes, it, she was like doing like a spell, and then his is like he just sort of appeared through like magic. Like so, I have a few theories on him. I don't know if he's being controlled by her, but I mean, like in the comic books, she does have a uh, a son. Okay, could possibly be him. Um, there is a character with the name Scratch as well, so you never see Senior Scratchy and him in the same scene. You don't, and also too, that guy that um is always around, like like right when um. The, Sparky the mailman guy, the delivery guy. Yeah, he always has. He's always delivering something. So he was the mailman then, and then, and then he's he's always by Agnes. It seems like really close by. So my theory is that you never see that guy and the rabbit in the same time. So I'm starting to wonder if he is that rabbit, and he could just change forms or whatever. And um, 
I, I have a feeling that guy might be Mephisto. That's just my personal theory. Um, because he's always around, um, Agnes whenever there's like a big thing going on. Like, yeah. like, um, Sparky, cause that was like a big life event. And See, then, um. I think he could be that, or he could just be like a minion of, of Agatha. Um. Yeah, that could be it too. Just like a follower of her or something, but, uh. <clears throat> Do you want to take a quick break here, Matt, and then uh, talk about some trivia and then our speculation for the future episodes and stuff? Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. We'll be right back, folks. <laughs> <laughs> It's the ninja from the Ask the Angry Ninja Show saying, come listen to the show. We got the ninja wife to give you movie reviews. We got the conscript to give you the ninja news. And we got the battle to talk about your sports. And as always, it is the Ask the Angry Ninja Show. So ask me a question. We'll give you the ninja knowledge you need for your ninja life. Search for us anywhere you get your podcast from. Just search for the Ask the Angry Ninja Show and enjoy the show. We are back, folks. Hope you enjoyed those ads or whatever they were. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, so, okay, um, back to the uh, little bit of our speculation here um, before we get to trivia. Um, the, uh, the, the, the mailman now has a rabbit on his hat. <laughs> Which could mean that maybe he's senior or scratchy. Right. But I do believe there was a scene where they were both in the same shot. Okay. In one of the episodes. So I'm not sure. But, um, or it just could be like some kind of, you know, thing like that. And he's wearing kind of a purplish outfit with yellow on it. And purple is kind of the color of Agatha. Mm-hmm. Um, also, um, the name of the company that he's uh, delivering for now is called Presto. Which is a magic word, uh-huh. like like presto changeo and you know stuff like that. Right. It also also means fast, but you know, it's interesting. Um, hmm. Could be a possibility that maybe he and uh, Pietro are one and the same with the fast aspect, but I don't know. Right. That's that's just something that just popped in my head right now. Um, hmm. See, I my thing is is I think that. I don't know the point of bringing in Evan Peters as Quicksilver if he's not somehow connected to the X-Men movies. <clears throat> so I'm not sure, but it could just be just to throw us off. Yeah, I, I think it could be it. Just they're kind of playing. Because like they know like modern shows, especially like superhero shows, but... Although I wouldn't really consider this show to be a superhero show, to be honest. Uh, yeah. uh, it's like much more than that, to be, to be frank. I think it's, yeah. it, it's a good thing, actually. Cause can, it's going can, I, can I still be Mike? Yeah. Or do I have to change my name to Frank? You could, well, you could make maybe Frank your middle name or something. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, but, um, yeah, I totally lost my chance. I'm sorry. <laughs> So, so ba- basi- basically, the the whole uh, the whole idea of, of of Quicksilver, something, yeah, yeah, like <laughs> like something about these shows you were saying, <laughs> something about the show, something something, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's why you listen to this podcast is for us to say something and you know yeah. stuff and and then me to make Matt lose his train of thought and then um yeah no no now I remember what I was gonna say so like. <laughs> They like the shows now almost expect us, <clears throat> the audience, to basically come up with theories. So like they're kind of playing with, they're almost like engaging with us. Like even like when they did the Agatha song, and she's like, "Oh, by the way, I killed Sparky. I did kill Sparky." It's almost like they knew that people would be speculating that, and they wrote that later on to reveal. So it's almost like. It, in a sense, it's breaking the fourth wall, if you will. Um, yeah, basically. That they're telling us, like, the, the writers are telling us, essentially, like, ha we knew that you were speculating that, and guess what? Yeah, that's what happened. Uh, <clears throat> so it's like, TV has become more interactive in that sense, which is really cool, in my opinion. Um, 
yeah, it's uh, it's interesting because I mean, uh, since, since things like like Lost and everything, um, we've we've had, and since the internet's come along, you know, they realize that everybody's going to speculate everything, so we might as well fuck with the audience. Um, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, okay, so um, so so uh, do you want to get to trivia here? Oh yeah, sure. Okay, so um. This episode is an homage to the mockumentary sitcoms The Office, Modern Family, and Arrested Development. Um, it's the uh, first episode in the series where Wanda and Vision share no scenes or dialogue with each other. Um, mm. Even the opening credits showcase title cards with just Wanda's name on them. It isn't until the final title card where Wanda and Vision's names appear together in order to display the series name WandaVision. Hmm. Um, the agents of S.W.O.R.D. that have, um, been changed into circus performers have a new logo on their car doors, and the Ackerman has been changed to Spectacular World of Rapturous Diversions. (laughs) Wow. Um, the, uh, The, the strong man who confronts Vision at the circus, uh, formerly a sword, <laughs> the sword base, is also the agent who did not help Darcy with her equipment, nor gave her any coffee, and um, we interrupt this program. <laughs> so he's just wow. an asshole. Um, yeah, he was in this episode, too. Uh, <clears throat> the... Um, yeah, we talked about this where uh it's uh there there's the the title of the episode is uh breaking the fourth wall which is, you know, symbolic of both them breaking the fourth wall also um the uh talking to the camera and uh where Monica attempts to break through the wall of the hex. Um right. we also um the um the, the the other th- couple of stray things that I noticed too before I continue with the uh, the um continue with this uh trivia is um is that uh at one point um Wu t- learns that Hayward was trying to use Vision as a weapon. That's what Darcy had found out in the. When she, uh, when she was hacking. So Wu mentions that at one point. So that's kind of important for future episodes. So we do yeah. know that Hayward did have kind of nefarious, possibly nefarious, uh, um, you know, actions in his mind. Um, but also yeah. we do have, uh, it, it could just be that he's thinking of ways to protect the world. So. Right, but still, it's, he's kind of like going rogue a little bit, you know, doing so. Um, I think that's the only other uh, stray thing, you know, observation I had from this episode. Um, so, um, hmm. okay, uh, we have um, Darcy insists on adding a hula girl, hula girl to her dashboard, and that's uh. Just like uh, Sky used to do on Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So, <laughs> that's interesting. Wow. Um, so, it's kind of a you know, interesting thing. Because there's still speculation. People don't know. I mean, I don't know if this is going to happen. But a lot of people are convinced that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is no longer canon. Mm. But okay. it could be, but they're just in a different timeline. Is my feeling on things. Because there, there's certain things, like the first few seasons of the show are definitely in concert with the movies. But then after that, it kind of goes on its own direction. Okay. So, <clears throat> That's interesting, yeah. Um, so I'm not sure. I never really watched Ages of Field. I've, I've watched every episode, and I loved the show. It was it was great. A lot of people didn't like yeah, it. Yeah, I'm going to start watching it. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. An, it's an amazing show. Um, anyways. Um, cool. The... It gets better each season, too, in my opinion. 
So if you haven't watched that, I highly recommend it. Um, if you, if you go through any kind of, uh, I mean, we're probably not going to have any kind of uh, Marvel draws coming up because we've got other shows coming up after this one. So, but if you ever do, you know, have your Marvel withdraws, watch Agents of Shield. Um, <laughs> the uh, um, Wanda has cans of cane cola in her fridge, named after the production manager Mary Kane. Um, <laughs> so, uh, the uh, the Agatha All Along theme song is actually sung by Catherine Hahn, who plays Agatha. Oh wow! So, um. And, um, okay, Ag- Agnes's house in this episode, Agnes, a.k.a. Agatha, mm-hmm. is actually the same house as Samantha Stevens and Bewitched at the Warner Brother Ranch, a subtle nod to Ag- Agnes's true self, because, oh, wow. you know, she was a witch. So it's the same exact, um, the exterior house is the same house. The interior is different, awesome. but, yeah. Um, the, um... As we've talked before, the Nexus pharmaceutical ad ties to the Marvel Comics. Um, Nexus beans are individual entities unique to all multiverses and can right. a- affect uh, probability and thus the future, thereby altering the flow of the universe time stream. <laughs> yeah, and Wanda Maximoff is one in the in the comics. Uh, and this is the only episode with a mid credit scene. And... Um, that's all we got, really, for uh, trivia this week. Um, any any uh, major speculation you have for what's going to happen in the next uh, couple episodes here, Matt? Oh, wow. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, but I'm I'm really psyched about um, the next two episodes. Hopefully, those episodes will be a bit longer because we finally got introduced to who Agnes really is. So hopefully, you know, it won't be just like, two short episodes and then we're one and done. And so hopefully these will kind of maybe get into her history a little bit. Um, <clears throat> I was starting to wonder if maybe um, if, if she's like experimenting on, on the kids a little bit or something. Cause it looked like there was like two, um, like, I don't know what they were, what you would call them, like containers. I'm not sure if that's the word, but like what else glowy orange things were so i'm wondering if that's where she's got you know the kids like in like a suspended state or whatever um but um yeah i don't know um the only thing i could speculate is um is i'm not sure if i understood this correctly or not but if i have um does wanda even have powers of her own or is just was this agatha the whole time like watching Wanda, like whatever Wanda was going to use magic, was she just like doing it at that right moment? So that made Wanda think she was actually practicing magic. I don't know if I I'm, understood that. I'm pretty sure it. Wanda has her own magic, and I oh. think, but I, but I think somehow Agatha is like manipulating her in certain ways. But okay. but she does say you didn't think you were the only magical girl in town, right? Okay, so that implies that they <laughs> both have magic, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, so I'm wondering then if <clears throat> if Agatha already lived there to begin with, and and so like Wanda basically walked into a trap essentially, like because like Agatha is like oh some some other witch thinks she's got power this this should be fun you know type of thing. yeah <laughs> uh, or who knows I mean because it said that at one point in the comics that she. She did live, well, she lived in New York, but I'm not sure if it was kind of near New Jersey, New York, or, or whatever. Yeah. But, um, so, but that was comic books. This is a totally different, um, yeah. It seems a totally different, um, but, um, I don't know. I wonder, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, there, there's a, a few questions I have here is like, okay, first off, well, or things that I noticed too, like the, the aspect ratio does change when Wanda entered the basement. So I think the basement mm-hmm. is outside of the hex. Or underneath the oh, hex. Okay. Or underneath the hex where it's not <laughs> under Wanda's control. So there's something going on right. there. So that's that might be why Agatha is able to still have control herself. Um, I want to know what the deal with the spell book is. 
if it's, you know, if that's <laughs> a spell book or what it is, what kind of book it is. Because there's, <clears throat> there's numerous books in the comics that it could be, or it could be something completely made up for the show. Um, there's, uh, I just, I still want to know what the deal with Pietro is. <laughs> and I hope we find that out soon. I, I, yeah, who he is? Who, yeah. like, what his deal is? Maybe he's Mephisto. Maybe he's uh, Agatha's son. Maybe he's just one of her henchmen. Maybe he's not even real. <clears throat> who knows what the deal is? You know, and and why the why the hell he looks like Evan Peters and not what? not the other Pietro? You know, <laughs> not Aaron Taylor Johnson. You know, it's like what the hell? Um, yeah, it's, yeah, this is really confusing. This episode has left so many questions at this, this, the end of this episode alone mm-hmm. has left us with so many questions about what's going to happen now. And I mean, Hopefully, in the, in the episode at one point too, uh, the kids ask, you know, something about mm-hmm. uncle P and Wanda says, that's not your uncle. Right. So she knows something's up. So. Yeah. She, she knows at, um, <clears throat> Because for a while she was willing to believe that that was him, just like in a different form. But then after he basically told her that, like, his purpose is just to kind of, like, fulfill the TV trope, you know, of giving her grief and, you know, introducing a little bit of chaos into the family or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I don't know. Um, the color purple is interesting because now that I think about it, she's been wearing purple throughout almost every single episode. Yeah. Um, Agnes, I mean, or Agatha. Um, <clears throat> like the pants she was wearing that said naughty. I think, I think that those were purple. Um, yeah. Her brooch, I think we had a little bit of a purple hue on, on like the edge of it or whatever. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Just, just, and even this episode, she was wearing purple, I think. And, um, yeah, and, and, and that's the interesting thing, too. Um, Wanda, when she's wearing a bathrobe, it has blues and purples on it. Oh. And um, not and, and, and underneath it is her later on. She she when she comes when she comes out to go into the basement to find the kids and stuff, she's wearing a hoodie. That is mostly <clears throat> mostly her red color. Mm-hmm. But it does have like a, a stripe around it with like a light blue and like a purple <clears throat> on the arm, right. on the arms. So it's like I don't know if that means she's breaking through those colors or if those con- are still controlling her because they're around her arms and kind of controlling her in a way. But right. she's trying to break through them <clears throat> with the fact that she's got the red on. Um, right. Yeah. So it, it's a lot of lot of interesting little things. I mean. I, I, I just love the fact that everything can mean something or actually mean absolutely nothing. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's what she says too in the show at one point. She's like telling her kids, like, I'm, I'm starting to believe that everything is meaningless. Yeah. Uh, and she's like, you, of course, you're, you're free to draw your own conclusions, but that's, that's where I'm at. Right now. Yeah, exactly. But purple. It doesn't purple kind of is connected to red a little bit. And I always, <clears throat> red is kind of, this is just my own theory. It's not, I, I don't think anyone else has talked about this probably because it doesn't make any sense, but like, uh, this is like one of my own personal theories that probably just only makes sense to me. But like, so red, <clears throat> I've always kind of, um, interpreted as being like a color of passion, almost a color of like raw power energy and purple, um, you know, it has, purple kind of has elements of red to it, but I, I always interpret purple to be more wisdom oriented. So Agatha, she's kind of like an ancient being. She's lived for like thousands of years. So like being purple could be like, she's gone past the age where everything's just red and her, she's more, she's wise. She really knows how to perfect her magic in such a way that Wanda is not even close to being able to do, you know? So like, um, Wanda right now is just like, almost like having fun with it, you know, like, Oh, I can make this thing turn here. And, you know, Agatha's like, that's cute. How about this? I can like create an entire world, you know, <laughs> whatever. Like, um, so, so, and so, that spell book looks huge. So, so, so just for fun here, I happen to hmm. have my encyclopedia of symbolism sitting on the table that I'm at. Okay. Um, so 
Purple may be associated with royalty, can relate to mystical or sacred vision, mm. um, may represent an honor or privilege of the highest order, mm. um, symbolic of spiritual development, mm. can be associated with um, selflessness or personal suffering. Mm. A purple aura can, can, can correspond to spiritual power. Mm. Um, red can mean anger or rage, trouble mm. or misunderstanding, associated with human lust and desire, identity or base creativity, mm. associated with energy or power, the life force, um, see blood, um, corresponds to the first um, endocrine center of the chakra and sexuality might be symbolic of evil or aggression. <laughs> Metaphorically, she saw red. She was very angry. <laughs> um, metaphysically, associated with the planet Saturn, uh, the first color of the rainbow corresponds to the first note of the musical scale. Um, do. Um, red. <laughs> a red aura can cons cons correspond to anger, lust, or energy. Oh. Um, violet, which is also like purple, by the way, <laughs> yeah, is associated with great spirituality or spiritual dedication. Usually um, considered the highest spiritual color. So that might mean she's a witch that has more power than the others. Right. Um, yeah. um, associated with being at one with God, <laughs> or maybe the devil, uh, right. <laughs> cor corresponds to the seventh um, endocrine center of the chakra, and perfect attunement and um, unity. Metaphysically associated with the planet Jupiter, the seventh color of the rainbow, corresponds to the seventh note of the musical scale, T, a violet aura can cons can correspond to uh, spiritual dedication or mastery. Mm. So, yeah, it's a lot to think about there. So, <laughs> yeah, well, I guess maybe my theory is not so far. <laughs> no, it's not <laughs> <Yeah>. at all. <laughs> uh, I, I was just going based off like intuition here. Yeah, you know, just because purple mm. always does seem like a soothing color to me. It does kind of feel like wisdom. Because think about it, Agatha; she walks down very calmly. Like, this is a woman that you could tell has an immense amount of knowledge and power, but because of that, she doesn't really need to flash it around like Wanda's been doing. And Wanda seems like she's playing around. She's figuring things out. She's having fun with it. Agatha's like, yeah, that stuff is, you're like an amateur to me. Like, you know? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, by the way, I just wanted to give a shout out here. This uh, book is called The Encyclopedia of Symbolism by Kevin cool. J. D Tedeschi. So, yeah, look that up if you're interested. It's a really cool book, especially if you're really into analyzing movies and TV. Um, yeah, <laughs> like I am. That's when I bought it. I bought it when I was in a when I was in a um, English class in college that was about studying film. So, yeah, it's cool. which which is good because I've read it cover to cover and has since uh, ruined a lot of movies for me. But um <laughs> Well, uh, that's that, hey, that's that's true of most things in life. The more you learn about something, the more you yeah. see whole. Thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> Start watching a movie, and five minutes in, you're like, "I know how this is going to end." Um, <laughs> I know who the bad guy is. I know, you know, <laughs> that guy's dead. Oh wait, <laughs> right? <Stuff like that. laughs> He's got superpowers. Okay, I get it. Yeah, no, that sort of thing. <laughs> <clears throat> but anyways, wow. um, anything else, Matt, before we uh, wrap things up here? <clears throat> no, just just like I said last time, you know, don't be a spy. You know, don't, you know, don't be a spy for a nefarious organization. Well, not what, what you what people claim might be a nefarious organization based on their own paranoia. Just, you know, don't do it. Um, you know, there's other things in life to be other than a spy. You know, you don't need to do that, especially if you're not getting paid. Why would you be a spy if you're not getting it's just ridiculous but um you hear that so, jason um, Bourne? You, know, you hear that find... oh wait 
Yeah, you hear that? Don't just figure out. Go become a chef or a psychic, like in that one movie you were, or whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> whatever that movie was called, um, I don't know. Um, so, <laughs> movie where he was a psychic and it, it, um, his brother like set up a business and they made all kinds of money, but then he he left it behind because he Matt, felt Matt that Damon? he. That, I mean, yeah, Matt Damon was in it. Yeah, he um uh. Yeah, it came out like in 2011 or something. Um, he uh, he left it behind because um, he felt like he was actually ruining people's lives by like telling them like, um, huh? Like, I don't think I've seen this movie. The, <laughs> like people from the it was basically he could like say he could talk to like the dead is what it was and give them messages, but um, he felt like um, it was actually like ruining people's lives by doing that, so he just. <laughs> Got a regular job and his brother was pissed off because, you know, they made so much money doing this shit together and his brother was like his manager or whatever. So now it's like, oh, my little brother's not making me millions anymore by his powers. So I'm pissed off at him and want him to go back to doing that so I can make more money off of him. And, uh, and he like, I don't remember much about it, man. Um, yeah. there was like a tsunami that happened at one point, like in, um, in India and then like, the woman who survived it, like she like had a dream that was going to happen or something. And then she was like, she was like a news reporter for some like big, big company in Britain, I think. And she was trying to tell them what happened, but they told her not to do it. Like, you're going to embarrass us, embarrass us. We start talking about, you know, psychic stuff. And, uh, it's totally weird tangent. I know guys, but like, so, but the British actually have a reason for being like that because in the nineties, there was this guy named David Ike who was actually a, a very, a very popular sports announcer, like, like really popular, like, like kind of like Chris Berman, you know, in this country or whoever, like, um, what's the other dude? Um, Ted, um, Costa, what's his name? Um, uh, Sutton Costa, um, whatever. Um, Anyway, he was like a big sports announcer, <laughs> and um, and I'm whatever. I'm, I'm like falling here, okay. So he was a big sports guy, and yeah, and people used to tune in to watch them like do like um, uh, what's what's the name of the God damn it, it's a pool, but it's like a <laughs> billiards. Totally fucking, no, it was like a snooker. There we go. I'm like totally ruining the story. He he would like do like the snooker highlights. That's like a form of billiards for like uptight British people to make them who think they're better than the rest of the world. So they kind of play like a fancy different version of billiards or whatever. And like, he would, I'm um, sorry, that was kind of mean. And then he would like, um, he'd do that. And then like in 1990, he got it in his mind that he was like receiving visions from like the psychic world. And that like, um, he went to see like a psychic that was like actually meant to like help him with like his, his like knee pain or some shit but then like she started giving him psychic messages i guess apparently from like the god realm or whatever and then like she planted the idea to him that he was going to be like some big time prophet which mind you she probably was only doing that so that he'd keep seeing her more in pain <laughs> but whatever so but he believed her of course because he wanted to believe her and then he went on this show called the terry wogan show Terry Wogan was like a really popular TV host, kind of like a Phil Donahue type character, which I don't think anyone would know who that guy is anymore, but we do because we're older. But anyway, so like a Phil Donahue, <laughs> Maury Povich, again, I'm not helping myself with these names, um, you know, and then he had David Icke go on there to tell his story. By the way, D David showed up wearing an all turquoise um, pantsuit, like a, like a track suit for running <clears throat> because he believed that, um, the colored turquoise was like the highest vibration of like positivity or whatever. So like he always wore turquoise all the time at that point. And then he's telling Terry Wogan all of his theories about how there's going to be all these earthquakes that are going to like devastate the world, which, you know, he's not really wrong about that, but you know, you don't need to be a mystical prophet new ager to know that you just need to read a few basic science articles to understand that. So it doesn't, doesn't mean that you're getting, you know, whisperings from the universe. That's, you know, that's why you know that you just are able to, read but anyway so he goes on and says you know that um he's kind of like a godlike being um <clears throat> the son of the son of the godhead is what he said not, not son of god son of the godhead because 
I guess he thought that would make it not sound as bad or whatever. Um, and then they're like, oh, well, that means that you think you're a special type of being that, that's, uh, I, I have my, I've been rambling all day today. Just, I don't know what's going on. My thoughts are just everywhere. So just bear with me, please guys. So <laughs> he's like, Terry Wogan's like, oh, so you think you're like a special kind of being and like everyone else beneath you. And then David thought that he answered that good by saying, oh no, everyone is the children <clears throat> of the Godhead. It's just that some people, are indirectly created by the Godhead, but then, but then some people are direct creations of the Godhead, and then the other people are creations of that creation. It's like, so ipso facto, you're saying that you're more important than everyone else. Like, I don't know how you thought that was a good answer, because like you're literally saying you are a direct creation of the Godhead, whereas the people beneath you were created by you. Uh, so. Huh? How did you think that was good? Anyway, oh my god. So, in relation to that, <laughs> the people were like, no, you can't talk about psychic shit in a, in a fictional movie. I'm not sure how I got to that. But um, culturally, that's why, because in the fictional universe, they knew about David Icke in that movie, I guess, too. And they were like, we're not going to have another David Icke on our hands, because that like was like a national embarrassment to us. Hereafter. He was one- uh, Hereafter was the name of the Hereafter, movie. Hereafter, that's what it was. Yeah, I have yet uh, to see it. I have not seen it. So. <laughs> it was not, not that bad of a movie, to be honest. But, well, um, it, it was directed by Clint Eastwood, and he's a good director. So that was, Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, they're like, no, you're not going to talk about psychic visions because you already had David Icke once, even though they didn't mention David Icke. But they, that's what, they, in my mind, that's who they were referring to. Like, no, he embarrassed us with his turquoise um, tracksuit and talked about being the like, Godhead sons and all this kind of shit. And, you know, we're not going to have you embarrass us by talking about psychic visions. But then she's like, no, fuck you. I'm going to write a book about my experience. And then somehow either she had a psychic vision of the guy, Matt Damon, or Matt Damon had a psychic vision of her. And they're like, oh, we got to meet up somehow. So then like they had like a sort of meet cute type of thing. Although I don't think they ended up dating each other later on. But like it was kind of like a psychic meet cute, I guess, if you will. And then they're like, oh, we're. I'm ruining. I'm sorry. I'm like spoiling the whole movie for you. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe we should stop then, so I can watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway, I don't know how I got onto that. <laughs> it's, it's, sorry, it's, it's, I've been right. It's all good. It's all good, man. It's all good. I but, was talking to one of my friends today on the phone for 80 minutes, and I literally just like rambled from one like just string of consciousness thought to another. I mean, it was like, it's weird. I'm not even doing drugs. I have no idea why, you know, it's happening to me, but, um, so it happens. Maybe I do it. Maybe that will like actually center me a little bit. No, I'm just kidding. Um, The, uh, (laughs) anyways, um, before, (laughs) before we go here, um, if you, uh, enjoyed this episode and you enjoy our banter, um, (laughs) you may want to check out, um, our other episodes, um, that are not about WandaVision. Um, we have, uh, the latest episode that we had released, uh, this past week was, um, was our look at the direct video sequel, Road Trip Beer Pong. <laughs> yeah, we recorded that quite a while ago, um, finally released it. I forgot that I had that banked in the system, so I finally released it this week. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, that was a fun movie. Um, yep. <laughs> for better or worse. Um, but, uh, you know, if you enjoy, fun banter like that or you enjoy interviews that we have like our latest one that was with Rennie Temple a week or two ago and uh, we had one with Jonah Ray recently um, a lot of cool interviews that we've had over the recent uh, weeks um, hopefully we'll have more coming up um, I'm doing an interview uh, soon for a podcast called uh, the Nerdball podcast so um, cool. we'll see how that goes um, anyways um, be sure to uh subscribe to our show um working on it uh it's not up yet but we got all two real com coming up soon um check out our patreon um check out our uh t public um different ways that you can help support the show um you know if, if you have any questions or anything feel free to message me at mike at cullen com. if you have any thoughts on wandavision and want those shared on future episodes that's a good way to get a hold of me um Make sure you check out oh. Matt's music. 
Oh, yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Also, one more thing. Is it okay if I mention so- yeah, sure. something? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay. I was about to do this last week, and I forgot. So um, <clears throat> there's a guy named Jason Quick. Um, uh, he was my guitar teacher for a while when I was, like, 14, whatever. He taught me for a few years. <clears throat> he, he's a he's a jazz guitarist, and um, he's got a new album coming out. I should have prepared for this, actually, because I don't know the name of it. But... um. So it's like called the Jason Quick um, Quartet, I think is the name of his band. I will, he, uh, um, I will link it in <clears throat> the show notes too, so that'll help. Yeah, out. because so, yeah. I'm, I'm blanking on the. He might have it here actually on the, um, on his uh, his his page. It's, something, it's, it's like oh, it's something to do with like um, rent. Um, what is it? Yeah, yeah. It's called um, low rent. Space is the name of the album. It's by the Quick Quartet, and it's um, going to be released on April first. And uh, it's basically jazz guitar, but it's um, you know, it's not just not just guitar centered. I mean, it's the rest of the band. He's got a drummer. He's got like an upright bass player. I think there's a, uh, I think there's a guy playing trumpet. There might be a guy playing the mandolin or violin. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly which. Um, <clears throat> he's he's released a few albums. Um, with various different bands. I think one was called the, the quick trio. This one's the quartet. Um, and it's, it's not like, um, it's not like strict jazz. I mean, like he'll, he'll throw in like some other styles here and there, like maybe a little bit of blues or maybe like, a. it's, it's basically, it's not, it's not like how you would imagine like all jazz is going to be like totally technical. Like, you know, only, only like music aficionados would appreciate it type of thing. Like he, he has a he has a way of being able to kind of make it just mainstream enough to um, kind of get like a wider appeal, but not not to the point where he kind of loses like the integrity of what he's he's trying to do, um, which is a very difficult thing to do for any musician or, or any creative person for that matter. It's very um, that's a very tight balance to to kind of perfect you know to do that, but. Um, but he manages to do it. So, um, so yeah, it's called a low rent space. I mean, I haven't heard it, but I've, I've have all of his other records he has and they're all pretty good, really, to be honest. Um, yeah, you can find that at, usually his, pretty at, his, uh, at his band camp, uh, website. Um, I'll link that, I'll link that in the show notes. Yeah, and it's the quick, quart- okay, cool. quick quartet is the name of the band. So low rent space. By yeah. Quick quartet. And also too. Is- yeah. Yeah. And his, his website is also Jason Quick Music and it'll also take you to like a, a, Basically, a, like a sales, not a sales pitch, but like a, um, whatever he calls it, an advertisement for the record or whatever. Yeah, you can pre-order, um, you so can yeah, pre-order like, it now. So, yeah, do that. <laughs> yeah, do it. If you like free jazz, bebop, and some other categories with great melodic music, his new music is fun to listen to and makes the toe tap. Well, who wouldn't want to tap the toes? So... You'd be crazy to not do that. And, um, if your ta- if your toes are tapping on their own and you have no control over it, though, you might want to see a doctor. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, there might be a serious problem going on, but um, yeah, <laughs> you, you might want to get that checked out. <laughs> Anyways, um, anyway, we should probably wrap things up here. Um, my name is Michael E. Colin the second. That was Matthew Haas. Um, and I don't know why I'm telling you our names again, but anyways, uh, be <laughs> sure to check in with us again sometime. I'm getting kind of loopy here. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, wear a mask, people wear a condom, <laughs> wear a condom as a mask. <laughs> yes. Do that too. I don't know if that would work though. That might. Constrict, no. <laughs> that might constrict your breathing. So don't do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, don't. Yeah. So anyways, um, wear, wear a condom on your face and then a mask on your, <laughs> sorry. On your genitals. <laughs> yes. Okay. Anyways, so, um, don't, don't listen to us. We're not no. doctors. Um, no. you know, be, uh, be safe, be good, be kind, rewind. Um, <laughs> okay. Anyways, bye uh, bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening to all two wheel two podcast. A Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Hawes. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at cullenpark.com.